In today's tutorial, we are going to paint an autumn wreath. And not only that, but we're going to talk about some different ways that you can make that blank page seem a little less scary and a lot more inviting. Hi guys, what's up? My name is Shada. Welcome to my studio. Today we're going to be painting an autumn wreath. This is a lovely project and I hope you'll paint along with me. It's quite a specific project, but we're also in this tutorial going to talk about something much broader. And that is something that I hear a lot in the comments and it's something I can totally relate to. This idea that the blank page can be a little intimidating, a little scary. I get that, you know, you have expensive watercolor paper and you don't want to waste it or maybe you can't think of an idea for a project or maybe you have an idea but you don't feel that you can paint it. So yes, the blank page, it can be overwhelming. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you some of my process for tackling that fear. Uh, we'll work through some of our subject matter in a practice on a practice page. We'll also think about our color palette ahead of time and we'll talk color mixing. So I'm hoping to help you through that fear because the YouTube channel has really helped me conquer that sort of feeling of how do I get started? because I always have uh, projects and I always have deadlines and that's actually really helpful. It can be stressful, but more often than not, it helps me to you know, really push through. I know the difference now between a mistake that it means the project is garbage and a mistake that I can kind of work through and work with. And I always kind of have to push forward when things aren't going my way or I'm not feeling inspired. And that's actually been a really good thing and it's helped me grow as an artist. Um, so we'll tackle that. And before we get started, I just wanted to show you what I've been working on lately something about the change of season. I've just been obsessed lately with this color palette. It's sort of my autumn palette. I love the peaches with the gray greens and I'm just obsessed with this, this contrast between the purpley grays and the golden browns. I've just been playing around with that a lot and I've been painting a lot of daisies. They're kind of tricky. And so we're gonna talk about daisies today. Obviously you're painting a white flower on a white page. So you need to create some contrast there to show the flower. But if the contrast gets too heavy, you end up with this muddled flower that's not light and beautiful and everything it should be. So we'll work through that. Um, I did this other one as well. This was sort of my weekend project as of late because we had a big power outage here. So I've been painting a lot and yeah, so I'm just playing around with these purples and grays and we're going to work in a similar palette today and we'll talk about that. So let's get started. Today I continue my exploration of autumn shapes and leaves and autumn colors and I'll start with a supply rundown here really quick. I'm using Canson hot pressed watercolor paper on a block which means they're all sort of stretched. Um, I've got a piece of scrap cold pressed paper there which we'll talk about in a second. I am using my Koi set from Sakura, the watercolor pans. And what else do I have here? A pencil and eraser. I've got paper towel for blotting and then two glasses of clean water. Now I'm going to do most of this project with my number four round brush. This is animal hair. I will link a similar or the same one in the description below. And then I've got a cheaper synthetic brush that I'll use for mixing um, because mixing is really hard on your brushes. So the first thing we're going to do is think about what we want to put in this wreath. And one thing that I want to paint is daisies because I've really been working on them a lot lately. So I want to kind of continue experimenting with them and practicing them. And I tend to paint them the same way. I start with the stamen in yellow and then I mix up a light gray. I use Payne's gray and I put just a touch of either red or magenta in it. And it just gives it this nice warmth. You don't want it to look purple. You just want it to have that hint of uh, pink, I guess, but it gives me this nice light warm gray. There's lots of water in there and I come in with the brush and I'm just making these petal shapes. I'm sort of hinting at petals because the daisy is white. We need the page to act as the flower. So I'm adding um, some gray at the top near the stamen and then I'm sort of making the petal shapes 
by rounding them out along the bottom of each petal. We're gonna do another one so you can see, but I start with just some, some gray brush strokes. Some are wide, some are thin. And then I start to um, go in with for a little more detail. With the end of the brush, I sort of add some lines around the center of the flower and I shape the end of each petal. The next uh, plant, I guess, that I want to put in my wreath is uh, like a dried grass or a wheat. So I'm using a very light brown, a little bit of yellow ochre and brown, um, maybe even a bit of white in there to make this. And then you can see I start with a stem, could be curving, could be straight, and I'm just doing these little oval shaped leaves. Some of them I'll blur together to make kind of a messy wheat. <laughs> And we will let that dry and we'll come back to it. So the next one is, oh, this could be anything. This could be like a sea heather or it could be a little berry, but it looks great in a wreath because it's a very different size than the other plants. It's very tiny where the daisies are a little bit larger. And you can see I just do all these stems and I do these tiny little oval shape. They could be leaves, they could be berries. And if you do this in a burgundy or a deep purple or a brown, it really helps to add to that rich autumn color palette that we're going for. And doing this ahead of time, that's exactly what we're doing. We're practicing our flowers and we're also really considering our color palette. Now speaking of color, the next one we're going to mix up is this peachy brown and I mix a peach, a little bit of white and a nice chocolate brown color together. And we are going to use this to make sort of an oak leaf. So I start with my stem and then I do five leaves. I just drag the belly of the brush across the page to make these circular shapes. And then I sort of join them all together. So instead of having separate leaves, those five areas come together to make one larger oak leaf or something like an oak leaf. And if you are looking for more uh, tutorials, sort of a more in-depth study of autumn leaves, I did release a video about that last week. So you might want to check that out. It'll give you lots of ideas for what to put in your wreath. Here's another one I thought I would try out on our little practice page. It's just my typical uh, watercolor leaf. I'm doing it in brown instead of my usual green. And again, this one is um, created by dragging the belly of the brush across the page and then you use the tip of that round brush to uh, do the stem and to add detail or a fine point to each portion of those leaves. Okay, let's come back now that things are starting to dry and we'll add a little bit of uh, darker yellow or brown to the wheat. We're going to do a little stippling on the stamen of each daisy and then I'll also come in with a darker gray on the very tip of my brush and we're going to add a few lines, very thin lines to those petals. We also might add uh, some more shading at the bottom of each petal. Uh, you wanna be very light with this. The daisies are a lot of fun to practice because they're tricky. You need contrast. You can't just have a white flower sitting on a white page. You need some dark gray, but you have to be so light with it at the same time as also creating contrast, <laughs> if that makes sense. If it was all super straightforward, it would just be boring, am I right? <laughs> Um, but we'll practice those daisies more as we go through the wreath. I'm adding a little bit of darker paint to this oak leaves. Really this uh, whole page is just a chance for me to practice, think about my color palette, think about, you know, I thought that peachy brown was maybe a little too peachy. This is my chance. So if you're out there feeling like you are scared to put paint to paper sometimes, you're afraid of that blank page or you have good quality paper and you don't want to waste it. I think doing this little piece ahead of time is so key uh, to help you feel better and help you feel confident when you are ready to start a sort of a, a final painting or a big painting. I tried out a bit of green in my color palette, decided I didn't really like it. It was going for more, it made it feel more Christmassy than fall. Um, I'm trying out these kind of burgundy colored leaves for the berries and I'm I'm really liking that. So at this point, I think I'm done my practice and I'm ready to start my final wreath.
So I've got my good sheet of hot pressed paper here and I'm drawing a very perfectly imperfect oval shape on the page. I just sort of go around and around till I get it right. Then I erase most of those lines and then I definitely erase where I'm going to place the first leaf. So you sort of erase the whole circle bit by bit as you go. And we've already practiced all these leaves. So I've already got my color mixed up. I know exactly what this wreath is going to be made up of. So I'm all ready to sort of be successful at this. I'm starting with the oak leaves since they're the largest um, botanical in the wreath. So I think starting with the largest just makes sense. And I'm going to place oak leaves at, um, you know, at very unbalanced intervals all over this oval. So I'm starting in the corner. I always tend to start in one uh, lower corner of the wreath and I'm just playing around and adding brown and sort of adding a bit of a stem here. And I thought it would be nice to place two oak leaves um, here in this bottom corner. One's going to be a little larger. That's the first one. And then this next one's going to be quite a bit smaller. Whenever we're doing a wreath, you want to think, or any floral design for that matter, you always want to think about having things that are different sizes. So our oak leaves, those are our large botanical, although I'm still going to mix up the size and have some variation just within the oak leaves. And then the wheat and the daisies are smaller, and then the berries are the tiniest of all, and that those together will create a really nice wreath. I'm going to keep erasing as I go here and uh, I'll keep adding my oak leaves. I think this is the last one that I'm going to do and then I will get started on some of the other botanicals. With the oak leaves done I'm going to start adding daisies and I'm painting them just the way I practiced where I start with those stamens and then once I've painted the stamen I come back in with a very light gray and start making sort of hints at leaf shapes. Uh, start with your lightest gray first, let it dry and then you can come back in later with a darker gray. Once that paint has dried you'll have more control to do those fine fine lines. So this is very very light to start with, barely there. Um, and then I'm going to uh, place some berries and it's it's the same formula for each thing. You place a bunch of oak leaves all over the wreath, then you do your daisies or whatever your second flower is and then I'm coming back in with the berries and I just put them maybe in three spots, maybe in four or five spots. And it doesn't have to be a perfect pattern. In fact, I think it's better if it doesn't create a pattern. It shouldn't be oak, daisy, berry, oak, daisy, berry. You know, mix it up. It's supposed to be natural and very, very perfectly imperfect, as I always say. Um, and I'm just coming back in here with my round brush and doing the little stems and the leaves in burgundy, just like I practiced. I'll finish off the berries and the leaves. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is going to be the wheat. So you can see how not only by practicing our shapes or our florals and our color palette ahead of time do we set ourselves up for success, but when you come in to actually paint your good copy painting or your final piece, you're so comfortable Comfortable. Your paint is mixed up, you know your stuff, you know how to paint each flower and it really makes the process of doing your final painting so enjoyable. So definitely uh, do that practice work and think about your color palette ahead of time. Okay, so at this point the wreath is looking good, it's almost filled in and now what I'm doing is kind of taking a step back, mixing up some darker colors and I want to add some contrast. Everything looks a bit washed out and very basic and so I'm adding, you know, I'll do, I'll paint half of each leaf in a darker burgundy. I'm adding a darker brown to the grass or the wheat. I'll add veining to some of the leaves and I definitely still have a long way to go on these daisies. Um, on the oak leaves I'm adding like a nice dark rich brown and I'm also adding a dark stem that kind of connects the entire wreath. So you'll see me work uh, through that as this wreath comes together. And sometimes I just want to add a bit of translucent paint, you know, darken one side of a leaf, uh, darken the bottom of each berry. You're just adding a bit of shadow to everything, a bit of texture. And these daisies, as I mentioned, they still have a long way to go and I, I just work on them. I come with the very tip of that round brush and we do all these tiny, tiny 
tiny little broken lines surrounding the stamen in the center. And we're going to work on the shape of each petal, just hinting at the bottoms of these petals and just hinting at a little bit of texture on each petal. So it really is fun to work through. You need a light hand, but you also need contrast and that is the balance and that's really why i've been painting daisies so much lately is that i i don't know if i have got it right yet but i'm really having fun with it and it's something that is challenging me and i've definitely thrown out <laughs> a few paintings but i always just say oh well it was practice it was fun it was worth it it was worth it to to try and learn now here you can see me coming in with this nice chocolate brown and sort of connecting everything. That's that darker stem that's going to sort of connect the entire wreath and it gives a nice amount of contrast at the same time. You can see things are already looking better. The piece isn't quite as washed out as it was because we're, we're getting all this shadow and darker color now to um, kind of make everything pop make it all come to life. So I'll continue with my little chocolate brown stem through the center. And the daisies are looking good. Some of them need a stem. I could have done green, of course, for the daisy stems, but I chose to keep, keep everything in the same color family. And uh, for the last thing here, I am mixing up a really rich dark purple. I mix a lot of purple and brown with just a hint of black to get this nice dark rich color and then I am doing that little berry or sea heather that we practiced on the practice sheet <laughs> um, but I've made it much darker I felt that the piece needed more contrast it needed something darker and the nice thing about doing uh, a darker berry right at the end is that you can go on top of things so I'll put this right over top of the oak leaf or I can go anywhere I want and it won't look odd because it is darker than everything else and um, this is the tiniest thing. So in a lot of ways, I'm adding contrast. I'm adding a size contrast and a color contrast. And then the final, final thing that I'll do is take a step back and look for any areas that need to be just a little bit fuller. And I'll come back in and add a couple extra leaves, um, flush them out a bit, and then I am all done. I'm super happy with this autumn wreath. As I have mentioned a few times, I love autumn and I'm loving this painting with its rich autumny color palette. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you'll hit that subscribe button. For more content like this, you wanna be subscribed there are two videos a week now and you don't want to miss out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.